Hey there folks, Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you're all doing well. Today for this episode, this is After the Camp, and we are discussing the Falling Leaves Overnight Adventure. Go ahead, grab a cup of coffee, let's get started. Before we start going over the trip, I just want to apologize for this cold that I have. My daughter brought this home, and it is powerful. It has spread through the entire house, it's hit all of us, and it's lasted quite a while. Now the truth is, I don't feel bad, I didn't feel bad. Basically 24 hours after I came down with it, I started drinking some lemon ginger tea, felt great, I still feel great, but I sound like this. And so does everybody else. Very intense. Thank you, sweet, sweet daughter of mine. But um, Now when it comes to the Falling Leaves Overnight Adventure, it really was everything that I needed at that time. My inner wolf needed, needed to get out and needed to explore. And also, I needed to grieve for my mother-in-law. Now, since she passed away, I had to be strong. I had to be the rock for the family, you know? So, that was really my my way of saying goodbye to Nana, shedding a tear, and pressing on. So, you know, I, I was I shared all that with you. I shared with you all my emotions, and I'm glad that I did that. Everybody in this world cries. Everybody gets upset. And when it comes to events in our lives, the passings of friends and family and stuff like this, Everybody handles things differently. I'm the type of person, usually I stay pretty strong, I'll have, I'll shed a tear, and then that's it. So, you know, for Nanabug, I feel like I've said my goodbyes, so absolutely. Um, the trip was amazing in just about every single way. The weather was great. The location we were at was just amazingly beautiful. Those falling leaves was gorgeous. It really was an adventure. We'd never been there before, so we were exploring new territory. And I love that. I love going around a corner and be like, what am I going to see next? And so it, it, it was just such a nice trip, and I'm so glad that I was able to bring you guys along with me. When it comes to this being a great trip, the gear really plays an important role. And we might as well talk about gear now. We'll start with the backpack, and that is the Z-Pax Arc Blast Pack. That is a custom-made pack. It was made specifically for me, and I have to say that it was incredibly comfortable. Certainly one of the most comfortable packs that I've worn in recent memory. Uh, yes, with a custom-made product, you're going to spend a little bit of money. But you're going to have something that fits you to a T because you're going to take all the measurements yourself. You're going to hand them over to the company and they're going to make it for you. And that's what I did with this pack. And I was very, very impressed with this pack. Super comfortable. Uh, the Cuban fiber material, I think it's like a hybrid material. It's Cuban fiber with something else, it seems like. Uh, very, very durable. Really, I have no complaints about that pack. I like the fact that it's just one big rucksack. There's not a bunch of pockets on this pack. And that's the way I like it. I like all my gear to be in one centralized location. Because I oftentimes I see if I have a pack that has a bunch of different pockets, there I can't keep track of like where did I put this and where did I put that. So it's always this game of opening this pocket, checking, no, not there, open this one. So you understand what I mean. I like having my gear organized in organizers. For this trip, I used the uh, Husky organizer, and that was made from Vanquist, I believe. The Vanquist Husky organizer. Perfect. Had my fire kit in it, had battery backup, had fuel, solid fuel, uh, ferro rod, first aid, and so on and so on, water purification. Awesome. That's one great way to keep everything all together. So when I open up my pack, bam, grab it, go. I'm not having to search through a million different pockets. So when it comes to the pack, it really was great. Nothing but thumbs up on it. I am certainly looking forward to getting that pack out again sometime soon. By the way, I should mention that that pack weighs only one pound. It is 16.5 ounces. 16 ounces is one pound. So you're just talking about a smidget over one pound. That's pretty dang impressive, no doubt about it. Next up, we have the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Flat Tarp. And that is 8 foot 6 inches by 8 foot 6 inches. That is a good sized tarp. Super duper lightweight. With the guy lines, we came in at nine and a half ounces. That's pretty impressive for a shelter system. Now, we also use the Mountain Laurel Designs Bug Bivy, which is only six ounces by itself. So we're talking about less than one pound for complete protection from the elements 
in the environment and from bugs as well. So that's pretty dang impressive, no doubt. Now again, these are fairly expensive items. Everything pretty much on this trip was custom made for myself. I went to these companies and I had specific requirements that I needed to have matched and they were able to do this. So not only was I able to get super strong items, but I was also to get them to fit me personally. So with that Cuban fiber tarp, the mountain hyper light mountain gear flat tarp, super, super impressive, no doubt. Cuban fiber is known for being extremely strong. It absorbs zero water. It's also not breathable at all. So you need to have good airflow. You need to know how to set it up so that you prevent condensation. And it did a great job. It did rain that night. We set that up in storm mode, and storm mode is a very simple way to set up your tarp that could basically withstand any sort of environmental conditions that you could throw at it. High winds, snow, rain, whatever. Very, very awesome setup. Very, very simple, like I said. And you could set that up in just about everywhere. You could set it up in the forest like I did. Just use that tree as the support, run a line, and you're you're done, you're ready to go. You could do this on top of a mountain with no trees using only a pile of rocks or a trekking pole, whatever you wanna do. And really, when you have this set up, you will only have one side that is open to the elements. So set that up away from the wind. So if the wind's coming in this way, you wanna have that entrance the opposite side. That way it just flows right on over. Now, if you're on top of a, a mountain, something like this, and the winds are just kinda of circulating, you're going to have to stop up that hole, basically. So you could use rocks, you could use shells, like your jacket, whatever you got to do. Very nice. It's very easy to do. As I mentioned already, we use the Mountain Laurel Designs Bug Bivy. And again, very, very lightweight. That's only six ounces. Offers a floor, full bug protection, has a center zip. And what I like about that is that it's so versatile. You have runners on both ends of the bivy itself. So you can string it up. So you can pull that that netting away from your body or if you're just in a situation where you need just bug protection and you're just gonna go super lightweight no tarp no fly you can just lay it on you no big deal you can attach it to the tree above you whatever you want to do but uh, I was very impressed with that I love supporting these small little companies because they work hard they're employing Americans that's awesome next up on our gear is the Katabatic Elsic quilt that is 22 degrees 900 filled down Super duper lightweight. Let's see, that came in at 19.7 ounces, just a little bit more than one pound for a 22 degree quilt. I like quilts, I have to say. They are lighter typically than your average sleeping bag. They're also a little bit more comfortable. That way, if you're not sleeping in temperatures that are 22 degrees, you don't have to have it really, really close, really, really snug around your body like a mummy sleeping bag. It's real easy just to kind of spread it out, get it away from your body, so you stay a little bit cooler. You can really regulate your temperature with a quilt. One thing I like about that quilt a great deal is that it has basically runners that go underneath it. Okay, so you have the quilt on top of you, and you have these strings, these guy lines that go underneath your sleeping pad so that it holds your quilt into place. That way you can toss and turn all night long and stay nice and comfortable. You're not gonna wake up with your quilt wrapped around your head like you do with a lot of sleeping bags. That's really, really impressive. Again, this is one of those items that was custom made by the company for myself. So yes, this is an investment piece, but when it comes to gear, oftentimes you want to get the gear that really does work for you. Even though it may cost quite a bit of money, it's an investment. It's something that you're going to continue to use over time. So I am very, very pleased with this quilt. And I got the five foot six inch model. I'm 5'4", so this 5'6 quilt is perfect for me. I have a little bit of leeway so I can get it up above my head if I happen to want to, or I can pull it down and stay nice and comfortable. So as you can see right there, a lot of this gear is just super duper lightweight, and when you're a backpacker, every ounce counts. I tell you, if you could go lighter, you will have more fun, you'll go further, and really, it's all about comfort and enjoying your trip. Next on our list of gear happens to be the M71 stove. This is an alcohol gel stove, and it works so incredibly well. It's a great little stove. You could pick up like a package of six of these for almost nothing. I like these a lot. If you're going to use an alcohol-based stove, doesn't matter if it's gel, if it's a liquid, whatever, you're going to need a windscreen. That is key. And the most inexpensive way to go about getting a windscreen is just to make your own. You can make it out of tin foil. 
And if you guys happen to need an instructional video on that, just let me know and I'll make one for you. That stove was fantastic and it really did a good job of saving my butt because I went out on this trip and I forgot my lighter. Luckily, I had my ferro rod, but I didn't actually have a ferro rod striker. What I did have was my blur knife. And basically, I had to take a rock and smash it into that, get a nice abrasive edge on it. And that way I could strike a spark. And with it being an alcohol stove, I could just strike a spark and it would ignite like that. So that made just heating up my food and everything else very, very simple. Now, talking about not having a lighter, we had to go through this trip basically using that alcohol stove and using that ferro rod. And with that knife and that edge that I was able to put on it, it was really rough, man. Every time I would strike that, sometimes the sparks would actually fly into my face. So I had to be very, very careful, no doubt. The M71 stove is a great little stove. Very reliable, very lightweight for what it is, and it will last a very long time. In conjunction with the M71 stove, we use the Tox Titanium Pot. Very, very lightweight. I don't remember how much that weighs right off the bat, but it is the 750 milliliter version. I have a preview video. If you're interested in that, you can look it up. I know that some of you are interested in the clothes that I wore, and I'll go ahead and just cover those real quick. We had the Mountain Hardware Convertible Pants. Now, you're probably wondering what model is that? I have no idea. They're pretty old. I've looked around on those pants. There's not a tag. There's nothing there to identify them in any sort of way. There's no model marker. So, yeah, who knows? I like those pants a lot. They're very, very comfortable, very easy to put on and off the legs, but it has an integrated belt. And I really hate that belt. That belt is so integrated that oftentimes it'll get twisted, or if you throw it in the dryer, sometimes it'll come out, and it is very tough to get it put back in, especially the right way. So, eh, I wish it didn't have that. That's a, that's a feature that I don't quite care for, but overall, it's a great pair of pants. I believe I actually picked those up on eBay, very, very cheap, used. So, there you go. The shirt was a Woolex Merino wool shirt. Super nice. They're a little bit expensive, yes, but the quality is great. It is merino wool, so you have those wool properties, which are important to many people. When it comes to the socks, I had a pair of Keen merino wools. Very comfortable, no doubt. Over the socks, I had a pair of Go Light shoes. I don't remember the name of those, but I'll flash that on the screen for you. Good shoes, no doubt. I'm impressed with them. I'll have a video coming up soon. Going back to the cooking and eating, we had a Human Gear Uno spork, and basically... You've seen other models just like this, like a Light My Fire spoon sport combination. But this one is made specially so that it's extremely strong. I was unable to break it, even though I was trying to snap it. Definitely with a Light My Fire plastic fork, spork, you would have busted that thing in no time. Really, that's one of the complaints about those Light My Fire sporks is that they're so fragile. The Light My Fire plastic sporks usually run about three to four bucks. The Human Gear Uno, which I showed you, is right at like $10. So I would go ahead and spend a little bit more money and get yourself a really good high quality product that's not gonna bust when you're eating something. So I will have a preview of the Human Gear Uno coming up soon. So my friends, that's pretty much it. We've got over the trip, we've got over the gear. The trip was just freaking amazing. It really was just everything that I needed. Uh, we had a great time. It was just a beautiful location. We got to see that cool snake. And that really goes to show, you know, that's why you stare at the ground. That's why you analyze everything around you. I was able to find that sawdust and use that to get my fire going that night. And it's because I'm, I was looking around. I was analyzing everything, constantly thinking to myself, how could I utilize everything that's around me if I needed to? And that's how I go about my backpacking and bushcrafting and so on. I'm constantly thinking to myself. I'm looking at the, lay, the way of the land. I'm looking at the trees. I'm listening for water. I'm looking to see what's on the ground. That's my focus when I'm out on an adventure. So my friends, there you have it. We've gone over the trip. We've gone over the gear. It was a great time. And again, I want to thank you all so very much for joining me. Sorry again about the cold. That's how it goes sometimes, right? If anybody has a question for me, please feel free. Drop me a line. Let me know. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. All that good stuff. I'll see you guys around. Strength and honor, my friends. Take care. <laughs>